Okay. Really quickly, how many of you guys are council officers? Like executive council? Do we have any chapter leadership right now? A few? Okay, awesome. So that's really what we want to help you guys address a little bit. Third one. Let's see here. Here's kind of our outcomes or learning outcomes for you tonight and what we're hoping that you'll be able to take away with you. Um, by participating with us in this presentation, we're hoping that you will be able to understand how to use the situational leadership model. Um, you'll understand the impact on the gap through the leadership perspective and then the impact on the gap through the follower perspective. And I'm going to just throw it out there that for me, I don't like the term followers when we're talking about leadership, but this model and um, theory really focuses on, that, that's the terminology that they use. So when we're saying followers, it's not meant to be that someone's better than or more powerful than, it's just the term that's used in this model. Okay? And then I think we could probably put a fourth one up there that talks about the intersectionality between the leadership and followers within the situational gap model. Okay? So what is situational leadership? Really quickly, um, the, the theory or the model was actually developed in 1969. So it goes way back. It's been around for a really long time. Um, Amy and I actually first heard about it this last year. And it's a, it's a theory that has been used extensively in organizational leadership and training development throughout the world. And so we just found out about it this year. And um, not only did we like it, but we actually feel like it's very applicable to our Greek organizations and our Greek community and how the, the, the level of structures of leadership that we see in our communities, um, if we were all following this leadership, situational <coughs> leadership model, we would all be much more effective leaders without doing much more work. Um, when you guys think of the term situational leadership, what do you think that means? What do you think this model is about? Any thoughts? Initial thoughts? Yes? Just like different situations that you're in? Yeah, perfect. So that's, it, it, it's pretty much exactly what it implies in what you said, and that's that leadership focuses on leadership, leader, situational leadership focuses on leadership in different situations. It stresses the need for the leadership to provide both direction and support to the people that they, that they lead, or to the followers. Um, and the thing about leadership is it's not static. So leadership is always evolving, it's always changing. If you think about what your first leadership position was on campus or within your chapter, and where you come between then and now, um, your leadership development has been changing and progressing. And so the idea is, is that as a good leader, as an effective leader, you are identifying where your followers, again, their language, fall into this leadership, <coughs> this situational leadership model, and you're adapting your leadership to best benefit them, okay? And that's what we really wanna be able to get at today, is help you understand how to identify what um, leadership frame that you fall into, and then how to identify the people who are following you, and how to identify what they, what model they fall into so that you can match the two and be the most effective leader. Um, the situational leadership model, it's broken up into two components, and that's what we're gonna kinda talk with you today. It's the leadership style and then follower readiness. And I have to just quickly give a disclaimer. We're gonna be going through this kind of quickly, um, and we've got handouts, we've got stuff that we can email you, we're happy to share the PowerPoint with you. Um, so we don't mean to be just lecturing at you, but we want to get through the theory part so then we can talk a little bit about what that means, all right? <laughs> so I'm gonna take the first half and I'm really gonna talk to you all about leadership style. Um, so leadership style is gonna be the patterns of behaviors that you use as a leader to influence others. And generally those are expressed by the words and actions that you all portray. Um, so there's an important component to this though that we're missing in terms of this diagram because leadership <laughs> is most effective when you think of how it's perceived by others. So when you think about what the actions and the um, things that you're doing as a leader, they're only effective if others are pe perceiving them to be effective. <clears throat> so let's look at this a little bit more. It's not about how people see themselves that matter. It's how they um, come across to others they're attempting to influence. So what do you all see here? I know probably some of you have seen this before. A lady. You see a lady? You see a face? So you see a tree? How many of you guys saw the lady first? How many of you guys see a face first? Do you see the other one now? Nose. <laughs> Took me a while my first time to see it. <laughs> yeah. 
So again, it all depends on how you see life. And I'm going to jump in because I think it's not only how you see life, but it's what they said, how other people that you're leading see life too. We're not looking at everything through the same lens. Yeah. Do you want to move the road for me? Yeah. So you keep walking in front of that. Thank you. Um, so again, back to this main slide that we had before. So we know that leadership style is a pattern of behavior that we're using to influence others. We know that it's our words and our actions. Um, but we want to define this a little bit more. Um, so this is how we should actually look at leadership styles. Um, leadership style includes both past behavior, which can be seen on our x-axis as moving from low to high, and also relationship behavior from low to high. So kind of like in the beginning when Sony was talking about directive, um, supportive relationships. So task behavior being directive, relationship behavior being supportive. So let's look at that a little bit more. So task behavior, the extent to which the leader engages in spelling out the duties and responsibilities to the team member, to the person that they're leading. So task behaviors help group members accomplish goals, they give directions, they establish the goals, they establish methods of evaluation, they set timelines, they define the roles, they show exactly how the goals are supposed to be achieved. So they really engage in direction and providing that timeline for achieving what you all as a group want to achieve. Generally, task behavior is more one-way communication. Um, it's clarifying what has to be done, how it needs to be done, and when it needs to be done by, and who's going to be responsible for doing it. So it's really one way from me as the leader to you as a follower, or to you as my vice president, my team member, pieces like that. Relationship behavior is the extent to which the leader engages in two-way communication. So really helping group members feel comfortable about themselves, feel comfortable with their other team members, feel comfortable about the situation, about the tasks that they're about to take on. Um, this two-way communication is really about, as a leader, I'm asking my follower for input. I'm asking um, them to help solve problem solve with me. I'm engaging and showing emotional support for them if they're having a stressful day. Um, I'm listening and really engaging in that two-way communication piece. So these are our two accesses. So let's take a closer look. So leadership styles can be classified further into four distinct categories of task and relationship behavior. And we're gonna look through them one by one. So the first style is S1, first style one, in case you didn't make the connection. Um, and this is really a high task, low relationship behavior style of leadership. Um, we call this style directing. Um, in this approach, the leader really focuses communication on goal achievement. They spend a smaller amount of time doing those supportive relational pieces, like listening, asking for input. It's very much so one way. These are the tasks that need to be done. Here's how I need you to do it. Here's the steps that are involved. And I'm going to check in with you consistently to make sure that you're meeting steps um, every step of the way. Generally, the leader is the one making the final decision um, in this instance. So effective behaviors, if you are a directing, directing style of leader, is telling, guiding, instructing, establishing. Um, but that doesn't mean that you want to be demanding or demeaning or dominating or attacking. It really is more of the telling, guiding piece. So that's S1. Any questions so far? No, I'm scrambling to write. <laughs> Just so you know, we'll send you guys PowerPoints. Don't feel like you need to take down all these notes because we're happy to send you PowerPoint and we've got handouts that we can send you to. Yeah. Um, so S2, the second style of leadership we're going to talk about is coaching. Um, in this style of leadership, it's high task, high relationship. So the leader really focuses on communica communicating the achieving of goals and also meeting the social, emotional needs, really connecting with the person just as another individual and engaging in more of a friendship. Um, the coaching style re requires the leader to involve themselves with the team members in terms of giving input, soliciting feedback, um, giving <coughs> encouragement. Um, however, it's also an extension of the S1 in that spelling out tasks is still very important, <coughs> making the final decision on what is going on, what is to be achieved. Um, all of those are still very important. So when we look, think back to our first activity when we were doing the peanut butter, and Walter <coughs> and I were, I would say, engaging in I was very specific from the beginning about these are the tasks that need to be accomplished, but 
I was still trying to form a little bit of a relationship with him. I was, as best as I could in this situation, asking about his family, asking questions, trying to get to know him as a person, and then also encouraging him, jumping in, helping out when I thought he might not make the time limit I had set. Um, so I would have considered this more of a coaching leadership style that I was expressing. Um, so encouraging, explaining, collaborating, persuading, those are all effective behaviors for this section. Looking at S3, um, we're in the supporting leadership style. So this would be low task behavior, high relationship behavior. In this, the leader is not necessarily exclusively focusing on goals. So the more important part is using supportive behaviors, using the relationship, building relationships, and then hoping that because you've built that relationship, that that person is then gonna be effective in their job responsibilities. So the supportive style includes listening, praising, um, asking for input, giving feedback. Um, a leader using this style often gives their team members or the person that they're overseeing control of those day-to-day -day tasks, but maybe checks in every once in a while just to say like, how are you doing? Do you need any help with anything? And then they're still there if you need to like major problem solve or run into a question. But overall, the follower or the team member really has control over those day-to-day -day operations. You're just there to oversee from a very macro level. Um, that street leader is also someone who's quick to give recognition and support. Again, going back to that high relationship behavior, they really want to praise, to listen, to provide feedback. So participating, encouraging, collaborating, committing, those are all aspects of a supporting leadership style. Okay. And then our last leadership style, S4, delegating. How many of you would say like that you're a delegator? That you would say in your leadership style that you like to delegate? Some of you? Oh, I'm micromanagers. <laughs> Just, kidding. Just kidding. The last leadership style is delegating S4. This is a low relationship, low task style. So the delegating approach. Um, oftentimes the leaders provide less task input. So it's more observing and trusting. You're assigning something and then um, you're really letting that person take control and do the task as they see fit. Um, generally after a group agrees on what should be done, that person can essentially run with it and do whatever they feel like doing, as long as it's within the boundaries of what the group has said we're gonna do. Um, oftentimes a leader who likes to be a delegator will um, give up the control of the project or the situation to the team member and oftentimes refrain from intervening. And then that's why we see it go down to a low relationship behavior because then you're not consistently providing that two-way communication, you're not providing a lot of feedback, not providing a lot of praise, um, or um, input, I guess, either way. It's really the, up to that team member how they wanna do their project. Um, so what we want you guys to do real quick is having seen these four leadership styles is maybe talk to someone who's sitting next to you about what leadership style comes naturally to me. So we want this to look like is, if I was sitting next to Sonia, and I would say, 